uh, we leave it open for uh, literally up to 500 people to join in if they like to do so. But right now you have an audience of one, which is me. So I want to start off by asking you this. If you had to describe what you went through when you had no information and uh, you had to, well, you had to go through a divorce. There was no Susan around. There wasn't. No, there wasn't. And every day I rue the day that I was not around for me. And the reason I say that is because when I got divorced over a decade ago, there were some divorce coaches, not many. The, the profession has had a burgeoning growth spurt since then. The only person that I found that was a divorce coach were life coaches. And they knew how to talk about getting me to the right path, but they really didn't understand the nuances of divorce. And the problem was, Paxton, is here I was a private investigator. I mean, let me, let me hide my face in shame. I was a private investigator, understood choreography of a courtroom, had testified over 1,100 hours, meaning that's how long I sat in the, in the witness box. That's not all the times I sat in the courtroom listening to cases. And yet, when it came to my divorce, at first I thought, I'm cool, I have this in the bag. I've been in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. the problem is, is I didn't understand divorce court. And that's where the real plummet and spiral occurred. I just didn't know. And so I relied on my attorney, who by the way, was not the best fit for me. And if you don't have the right fit attorney, you may as well kiss your settlement, kiss everything goodbye. It becomes a lose-lose proposition. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. And while I went through my divorce, always that was in the back of my mind, what happens when a civilian, okay, when I say civilian, not a lawyer, private investigator, okay. which I was, a police officer, a judge, somebody who's an officer of the court who understands that movement around the courtroom, what happens to the average everyday bloke who has to face a divorce? Mm -hmm. And I vowed that was it. You know, I, of course, I had some nudging from a social worker on one side of town and an attorney on the other side of town to become a divorce coach. But it was something that was nagging me uh, because people don't know how to go through the journey. You have, you had no idea about becoming a divorce coach. That was not for you. That wasn't even, you were a private investigator. And that's pretty much what you had in mind to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the lawyer didn't fit for you. Mm -mm. No. How did, how, did you know, how did you know that? Because everything went wrong. Everything went wrong. And without giving away too much detail, because I don't like to bog myself and talk mm -hmm. about me, 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 because it's really about your viewers, your listeners, and other people. But it was, she just didn't act in my behalf. Either my case was too complex, too high profile at the time. Everybody in our town, our city, actually, we live in a big city, right. knew this particular divorce. And so it was either out of her scope. Right. A lot of times attorneys get over their head in a case. They think they can handle it. By the way, all attorneys are not the, are not the same. Hmm. That's the big mistake that people make. They think, oh, well, somebody's an attorney. They can do this. I always tell people to find a matrimonial or divorce attorney. I'm sure the person who is a, uh, does estates and accidents and a myriad of other things is a great person, but you don't want a jack of all trades, master of none. You want somebody who really understands divorce and you want to make sure that they are a good fit for you. They understand your case so that you will get the best settlement because your settlement will determine how the rest of your life rolls. Now, what if this person is recommended by family and friends? That doesn't, doesn't give it matter. a green light. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. And that's one of the things in my course I talk about. When we go to get a divorce, what do we do? Where do we go? We go to the internet, right? We get bogged down with so much information. And people call me all the time and they tell me everything they've learned on the internet. Most of it they don't need and will never need. So they're just bogged down with it. Or they talk to family and friends. Isn't that fabulous? Because all my family and friends who have never been divorced had sage advice. Okay. Uh, that's okay, like asking so, the person, you know, who has never made a dollar how to make a million, right? <laughs> so, tech, a million. so technically, people who find themselves giving advice, if they've never been through it, 
they often recommend somebody that they like or somebody that they're comfortable with. But if that person has never dealt with uh, a toxic person, they've never dealt with the push and pull that comes with divorce. They've never dealt with a narcissist or anything like that or a a troublemaker, high conflict. Mm -hmm. That person, that lawyer, they're out of their wheelhouse. Absolutely. And uh, most clients who come to me will start with, Susan, I have the worst case you've ever heard. Actually, it's not, or because I've heard a lot of them, or I'm divorcing a narcissist. And that term really gets overused. Um, I can tell you, attorneys hear it every day. They're sick of hearing that. They don't want to hear you. You start off with I'm divorcing a narcissist. They're like, yeah, yeah. And they get, give you an eye roll just because they hear it all the time. Maybe you are just divorcing a narcissist. You may just be divorcing somebody who's being jerky and giving sure, you all the yeah, time. Yeah. And there's ways to figure that out. Okay. I mean, you know, somebody's telling you that uh, you'll pay for this the rest of your life and they're making your life miserable and they're stalking you and they're, they're not obeying court orders and everything else, more than likely you do have a narcissist, but if they're just kind of being obnoxious, that may not be the case. And once this dust settles a little bit, they may calm down and usually do. And when a person has a high conflict divorce, what does that mean? That's an often common term as well. What does that mean when a person has a high conflict divorce? High conflict divorce means that neither party is willing to have any kind of reasonable compromise. I mean, that's just giving you it in the nutshell and I'm giving it in layman terms. I don't want to bog people down with legal ease uh, and I'm not a lawyer anyway, but again, I've been a private investigator for a couple of decades and I hear it enough. <laughs> I've read enough um, divorce decrees. So, it, it, you know, it's a lot of times it's perceived as one person starts some high conflict or contention and the mm-hmm. other person feeds on it. And then the other person feeds on it and they feed on it and they feed on this and it becomes high conflict. And sometimes that happens, but a lot of times Paxton, somebody wants to just live their life and move on. And then there's another person that is just creating conflict for them. That's I mean, not considered high conflict. That, mm-hmm. That's not considered, that's not considered high conflict then. The divorce, the courts oftentimes look at it that way because what okay. happens, you have to react. So if your ex is doing things like throwing broken glass behind your car in your carport, or your ex is uh, following you to work and sitting in your your parking space, I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, if you have the kind of personality where you could go, oh, well, they don't really bother me, but most people don't. They get very excitable and then they call their lawyer. So it looks high conflict. It's like, well, you must be doing something. They wouldn't just show up at your work. What are you doing? My stock answer is you breathe. If you really want to be left alone and you are not creating any of this drama and you're just trying to flee from it, sometimes you have to respond to it, such as, can you, you know, you have to get outside and sweep up the glass behind your car. And I've heard that story many times. (laughs) And so then you get upset and you respond and then it looks like you contribute to the conflict when in truth, you just want it, you just want to live your life. Okay, so I have to do something here. I'm just going to check in on something. Anastasia my dear friend, I know, I see that you're here. Um, hopefully you, oh, good. You turned it, I was going to turn it on. I was going to turn it on for you. Uh, by any chance, would you happen to have a, have a question? I didn't want to leave you out. Cause uh, listen, I've got questions. I'll just tell you right now, Susan questions. I've never asked Susan. She has no idea what I want to ask her, but I'm just curious, uh, Anastasia, any questions on divorce before I, I take over and, and start given a whole bunch of questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paxton and Susan. I don't know, at this point, I just feel very emotional and I don't know, it just touches to the core what Susan just said. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you Paxton and ask some questions for now. When it comes to divorce, it's something that- Thank you uh, so much. No, no worries, no me. worries. Uh, I didn't want you to think I was ignoring you there. A- Anastasia, Thank you. Uh, along with others uh, that have been guests on the channel and uh, dealing with divorce, uh, she's here to, to listen to you, Susan, and, and to get some advice. But Susan, you have a course that's available uh, to individuals mm-hmm. uh, that you, you have coming out September 1st. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit more about that course. 
Well, this is a course that I thought about for a long, long time. Um, I have other courses. I have two online courses, one called PASS on PA, PASS on Parental Alienation. It's a five module course for those who are dealing with parental alienation. Then I have something called the Divorce Recovery Ladder, which is a really intensive nine module program on going through divorce. But what I've done with this, I, what I call an accountability program, it's 10 days, eight to 10 minutes a day. You mm -hmm. hop on Zoom, we'll send you the link when you sign up, get on a Zoom class with me 10 days in a row. It's at 11 o'clock Eastern time, but if you miss it, no big deal because we record it. You can get it in the portal, which we will provide to you. And in those eight to 10 minutes, I give you so much information and information you need, starting with day one, how to get your ex out of your headspace. Got to get them out of your headspace because the rest of the journey will be a nightmare if you don't. So we talk about that. And then oh. there is an open Facebook group for Q&A that we do once a week for about an hour but here's the but folks i jump in there often and you know we'll shoot you an email and say guess what susan's kind of hanging around facebook so if you have any questions you can join oh, in cool so so this is really a hand holding and there's accountability there's steps along the way the second day we are going to talk about taking care of yourself because guess what everybody does when they go through the divorce they care about the house the car the job the kids you name it right and but not themselves so I get clients who come to me basically dragging with their tongue hanging out and they say, I'm so exhausted, I can't even pick my head up. So we talk about that on day two. Day three, we talk about what kind of divorce do you have? You know, well, what's going on? What, I've never even heard somebody say that before. And trust me, I've been divorced. What kind of divorce do you have? Mm -hmm. Well, are you collaborating? Is, is it about two people who are just... We've grown apart. Let's separate. Oh, okay. oh. Are we talking about, hey, we got married in Vegas six weeks ago. And this isn't going to work out. How do we disband that? Or do you have a long-standing divorce? Okay. Okay. I never <laughs> even thought of that. That is just okay. Go ahead. No, or do you go. have a long-standing situation that's really mm -hmm. challenging? And there's, you know, so we talk about that. Day four, we talk about how to get the right attorney. Real important. Because the majority of my phone calls, folks, majority of my phone calls or my inquiries or people who contact me on Instagram or send me emails are they are dissatisfied with where their case is going, which leads us to day five. And that is how to be the best client. You know, working with attorneys is a two way street. A lot of, I work with a lot of attorneys. They give me a laundry list of things when they start with Susan, tell the clients to stop this or <laughs> do more of that. And so we have that discussion. And then we talk about the kids. We talk about finances. We, you, and, and I'm not talking about 10 minutes where we talk everything about your finances, but we pick your brain. You have to know this, 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 and you get checklists. And we talk okay. about social media. Social media can be a nightmare. That's my big pet peeve. But yeah, social media. And it's a lot of attorneys, you know, just as an aside, I've had a lot of attorneys over the past two years when I say if yeah. there's one thing, now four or five years ago, they said, get your finance, get your people out of their head, get, 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 you know, get them out of their story. We don't want to hear the story a million times. Or they would say, get them with their, their finances. Now they're like, tell them to get the, you know what, off the of social media. And they're really serious. And, and for, for, for those that don't know why social media is, it technically sometimes can be a trap that will help uh, the person you're divorcing. Why is social media something people need to, that's why this course is important you're doing. Why should people get a, a clear warning about using social media inappropriately? Okay, well, here's one that I see pretty pretty often about daily, where somebody will go on daily. <laughs> so daily. social media okay, and they will post, hey guys, uh, I just saw, he just put on his Facebook a picture of him and his new hoe. <sighs> what do you all think? She is so fugly. And then 200 of her best friends who she's never met comment, you go girl, you look much better. She looks like this. She looks like trash. Well, okay, listen, guys, do you really want to see that again? You may never see it again, but you may see it again. Do you really want to judge to see that? You want to paint yeah, wow. yeah. the best light? And that doesn't put you in the best light. And that leads me into, we talk about how to, how to behave in court, how to dress in court. It's very quick. We give you um, accountability sheets so that you know what not to do in the courtroom. Because if you want to want, wear really loud clangly earrings and jangly bracelets, good luck with that. A judge is not going to like it. Leave it for the bar on Friday night. Wow. 
Okay. So there are tidbits. And then last, we have a fun one at the end, dating again. Should you? Would okay. you? Can you? Are you too wounded? When to start and when not? Wow. And so that is, that's the program. And it's very con condensed, but you get a lot out of it. And you're ready for your attorney. And that's the big piece for me, yeah, being Be ready for your attorney. Because um, it, it, you got the experience, so I'm just going to ask. We can make it difficult on the attorney if we're not the best client then. You, you can make it very difficult for your attorney and your attorney can also withdraw from the case. Oh, yeah, it's true. Just yeah, because you true. hire an attorney doesn't mean they have to stay with you forever. And if you really want to be obnoxious, if you really want to be demanding, if you want to have unreasonable expectations, you may not have that attorney for a long time. And attorney hopping is not something you want to do. Some people have said to me, well, if this attorney doesn't work out, I'll just hire somebody else. Well, you can, but then you have to start all over with the next person, which hmm. means that person has to read all the documents your first attorney had. Wow. And you will pay for that. They are not going to take time off on a Saturday night or a whole weekend to read your documents because they think you look good. They are going to charge you per hour to get mm. up to par on where your case is. And then comes the real fees. So you wanna hunker this good attorney down from the very beginning. So they are with you the entire journey. Uh, Anastasia, um, go right ahead. Did you have something you were gonna say there? You unmute yourself if you like. Oh, I'm, I was mute. Uh, Susan, just a um, quick question. What if attorney quit on me? Not I quit it on my attorney. <laughs> Did your attorney quit? Did your attorney withdraw from the case? Yes, yes. And what was uh, the reason, if you don't mind suggest, me? Suggested another attorney, so I'm now working with a new one. Uh, the reason was he uh, felt that he is losing the case and his tactics is not working with the judge. Uh, so we, there were two judges in my case. One was domestic violence, the other was just a normal divorce judge. So the divorce judge uh, was favoring my husband's side. That's what my hmm. attorney felt. And he is. And my new attorney now is very amicable, uh, kind of tries to do amicable tactics. And basically, I don't think it works for me because it is a okay. high conflict. If, if I would be doing amicably, it like my husband would be happy only if I have nothing. <laughs> that's, wow. That's the only amicable um, he would accept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Well, that's a good question. And I think you're a perfect example of what I've just talked about. And that is finding the right attorney from the very beginning and being very clear about what is happening with your divorce and what you think will happen based on the personality that you know of your your spouse or to soon to be ex-spouse mm -hmm. because if you don't they get in like you said he feels like this is not something he can handle and i can tell you when i was in a, a custody battle in my divorce and this is well after my divorce was over mm -hmm. and i reached wow. out to attorneys there was one attorney who said to me whoa i can't even touch something like this it's really out of my wheelhouse and i was with a friend of mine at the time and my friend's like how dare they say that to you and my answer was, no, thank you for saying that to me. The last thing I would want to do is hire somebody who's out of their league. And there's nothing wrong with somebody not wanting this kind of high conflict divorce. And the only thing that happens is if they take your case is exactly what's happened to you, Anastasia. I understand your current attorney wants to be amicable and that's nice. There are collaborative attorneys out there they don't do well with if, if you're divorcing with a narcissist because they always want to collaborate and a narcissist will not. Yes, they have exactly. to be that's, that's ahead of happening. the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have to see what's happening and they know how to, they have to understand what's happening without saying narcissist, unless the attorney wants to say, oh yeah, they're a narcissist, blah, blah, blah. But you want to make sure that they understand the, the energy of your case, because if not, and they, they want to be, and I'm not saying this in a negative way, but they feel like, well, let's collaborate. Let's everybody get along. A narcissist is not going to. 
just not going to happen. No. And in fact, they will use that to their advantage. And you will find yourself drowning in divorce garbage. You will never be able to get your head above water because they will put on the appearance that they're collaborating and they walk right out of mediation and they walk right out of a meeting and they go, <laughs> not going to happen. So if you have an attorney who understands that, you will be much better. If you have an attorney who's like unicorns and rainbows, and it's like, we're all going to get along and we all want to collaborate and we all want to be friends and let's all have cake. Not going to happen with a narcissist. And we're on narc abuse right now, which is why I can say that freely. Not being on narc abuse, I would just say, if you have somebody who's really creating a lot of conflict, they more than likely have some kind of borderline thing going on. Going on. I can't diagnose them. I'm not. Sure, of course, right. Normal mm -hmm. people don't act like some of the things that I hear. Um, I had a client not too long ago, the, uh, his ex-wife, they were divorced. His ex-wife went to see her family in Germany and he, he was on the plane. Wow. Stalking her. Any reason why he's on the, oh, and he's not from Germany. She is. And their divorce was high conflict the whole time. And one of the things she continued to ask her attorney is to write something in the decree that he's not to follow her to Germany. And the attorney's like, oh, he's not going to do that. You get divorced. He doesn't care. The heck he does. And he cared big time wow. and pestered her on the plane. Then she got to the airport and he was stalking her at the airport. And now she's in obviously in her mother country, but it, it just got really bizarre that she could have been protected from that. By the lawyer. Well, I, the putting lawyers, something the lawyers in can, writing. The lawyers can't do everything, you know, and I and and obviously they're humans, you know, and they they practice the art of law. But if you have an attorney that understands your case, understands, and basically on the intake when you have your your consultation, mm -hmm. and you ask some key questions that we talk about in my course, you should get the attorney. That's good for you. I mean, when I ask people why they hired an attorney, I hear everything from, oh, I love their office. What? Love their office? What does that mean? Or the parking's great. I, mean, I know parking is important, but what's more important is that you get a reasonable settlement than whether you like the colors motif in the conference room. You know, I mean, it's like it's irrelevant. Or or they'll say like, well, my, my best friend's brother, the guy he works for, sister, used this lawyer and really liked them. And I'm like, that's four degrees of separation. Did you interview them or did you just give them a retainer? Well, I thought they would be good. Well, I, you know, people will interview dog sitters more thoroughly mm -hmm. than they will interview an attorney for their divorce. Oh. When it comes to trying to navigate after you have chosen an attorney and now you're going to navigate away from that attorney, knowing that you're going to have somebody that needs to be caught up to speed, is that an option when they don't understand what they're dealing with? Does it mean someone has to maybe take that chance, even Anastasia or someone in her position? Or do you try to have a heart to heart pound the table meeting with the current attorney? Well, I know you don't have all the particulars. I'm just tossing. That's a hard away. question to answer because are they really, are they truly not understanding what you're explaining? And if you explain it well enough, then they can represent you. Or is this really out of the wheelhouse? You know, so it's like asking somebody who's never painted your house to paint your house, or maybe they've done one house painting but you want somebody who's painted 30 houses. It, you know, so it's really about their experience with a case like yours versus finding out what kind of case you have and then trying to mold them to be able to represent you for a case that just may be out of their league. How long have you had your attorney, if I may ask, not to get too particular, my friend Anastasia, how long have you had your attorney? Um. The new one or yeah, old? the new one. New, the new, new one. one uh, it happened June, I think, this this year. So two How long months. have you been separated, and are there children involved? Yes, I've been separated for more than a year since June twenty twenty, and yeah, there are children. Two Minor three. children under under eighteen. Yes, yes, thirteen and six. And where are they now? Are they with you? Fifty fifty. Um, yeah, <laughs> fifty fifty recent change to the 
custody okay. before it was 63 and visitations for the dad. It was 63? Yeah, my, I had more dad has visitations. Where, who came up with 60, so 63 and 37? Was it that? Yeah, so it's like it was uh, Sunday 4 p.m. to Wednesday drop off at school. Okay. His custody. Okay. So he, he went back and filed mm -hmm. half 50 yeah. 50? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are the kids towards you? They're not, I mean, are they, is he? No, no, he's not, uh, how it's called. <laughs> Res okay. uh, what what okay. yes they 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 are fine. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, as, very good. Not as as strange in them. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good to know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Your advice, if if you want to, Susan. Well, I mean, if you you know, I think at this point you've had this attorney two months. You have to decide: Do you want this for another six months, a year? You know, how long is your divorce going to going to take? I, I see that. I see divorces. Uh, finalize in 12 months, not so much with COVID now. Usually it's around 18 months to 24 mm -hmm. months. So I think you mm -hmm. have to decide, is this attorney a good fit for you? I mean, don't be, look, you know, people <laughs> fire babysitters, they fire accountants, they fire physicians. This person is going to be very instrumental in how you settle this divorce and what your life will be like after the divorce. Mm -hmm. Do you think, Susan, um, judge matters? And is it possible to get another judge on the The judge does case? matter. And how, how it usually works in divorce court, and it depends on the jurisdictions and it varies around the country. There are some jurisdictions that as soon as you file divorce, you get assigned to a judge. And that judge is with your case the whole time, whether you like it or not. There are some jurisdictions where you can ask for a court appointed judge. Again, somebody's appointed to you, whether you like it or not. And in most jurisdictions, the judge is determined about 4 p.m. the day before your, your hearing or trial. Wow. And you wow. don't really get a choice other than your attorney will know who that is, like at the end of the day and call you again. Okay, we have Judge Smith or we have Judge Jones or we have Judge Schoenfer, right. whoever, whatever the name is. And right away they'll say, okay, they're lenient. They're not. They're hard. They don't like women that much or they're not fair when it comes to custody. And then you sweat bullets the whole night. I was going to say, now. I was going to say, you yeah. I mean, like, I wouldn't go to get in front of that judge and this work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's you know, he, he only likes women. Then I have to go into court with a dress and some earrings on or something. Well, there you just, go. Just like, <laughs> you know, but I've been in courtrooms where I've seen judges um, rule a particular way for one case, and then an hour later they have a very similar case and they rule differently. I mean, there's a lot of factors mm -hmm. that come into play. Uh, there's a good thing and a bad thing about having your own judge, Anastasia. If you have a judge that loves you, thinks you're the greatest thing since sliced bread, and really kind of leans and favors you, you will be lucky. If they're mm -hmm. biased towards your husband, that's going to be an uphill battle because your whole battle will be, well, the judge likes him better. The judge likes him better. How do I get around the fact that the judge likes him better? Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's, it's a double-edged sword in both, in mm -hmm. both arenas. Mm -hmm. yeah. The best thing, Anastasia, is not to get in front of a judge, meaning don't let a judge make a decision. You will more than likely get in front of a judge for your hearing, but that's mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. for the judge to hear your settlement. In other oh. words, you and your oh. husband. Go ahead. No, you're going to explain it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. This is a giveaway, folks. Anybody who's listening, this is freebie, freebie, freebie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't, you know, clients will come to me and go, well, I can't wait for my day in court. Let the judge decide. And I'm like, nope, stop right there. Bad idea then, you're saying. Stop right there. Wow. You, you and your spouse want to come up with a settlement so that you stand before the judge with your attorneys and your judge and the attorney will have, you know, your attorney will type it all up real nice and legalese and the judge will put on the recorder and maybe you'll be in a courtroom, you could be in their chambers and they will say, mm -hmm. okay, article one, both of you agree, mm -hmm. husband and wife agree to da, da, da. And you say, yes, 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 yes. That's a whole lot better than mm -hmm. not agreeing. And then having the judge say, all right, you guys don't agree on this. Here's the final verdict. And then they make mm. a decision for you, mm. your life for the rest of your life. And if you violate that, you are in big, big, big trouble. Why? Because the judge told you you were going to do X, Y, and Z. So if you don't do it and you come back in court for contempt, they will have a very raised brow as they stare you down. 
So it's <laughs> it's it's imperative <laughs> that, that you follow you it. Don't give away your power. And okay. and a lot of as I said, a lot of times people come to me with this: the judge will prove to him, or you know, mm -hmm. you'll see the judge will they'll. they'll my wife's going to be really sorry that she started this because the judge and I'm like, bring that down. Let's not go that route. Right. Mm -hmm. Because leaving it in the judge's hands will mean that he gets to decide what the settlement is. But what if it's uh, difficult to negotiate with the person you're dealing with? It can go to the point that nothing can be settled before you get to that hearing and you have to let the judge. That's still taking a well, that's the skill shot in the dark. That's the skill of the attorneys. Remember, we talk, I okay. like, they always come back to you need the attorney that understands your case. So if your attorney understands you've got a really high conflict person, maybe mm -hmm. they have a borderline, they're narcissistic, sociopath, all of the above, you check the box, right, right. It's crazy, yeah, but right. who cares? <laughs> okay. you know, it doesn't matter really. Leaving. Like, yeah. you know, I've had clients say to me, I wonder if they're bipolar. I'm like, do you really care? Does it you're matter? Like, you're you're leaving. <laughs> like, yeah. if you find out a diagnosis, does that make it easier? I doubt well, it. You they're know, still going to be pretty, difficult. Yeah. It's still pretty crummy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you want you want the uh, uh, you're a good attorney who understands this kind of conflict that can write to the other side and go, hey, look, we're going to stop this in its tracks. You know, do we really want the judge to have to decide? And you hope that the other side's attorney will say, look, do you really want the judge to decide? Because remember something: if you're dealing with a narcissist, they don't want anybody to decide anything for them, right? <laughs> Well, do that's you, true. They, that's do you true. Really think they want a judge to tell them what to do. And by the way, if a judge tells them what to do, they're not showing up. They're not going to do it anyway. <laughs> so, you know, so it's better to start right at the baseline, you know, and that all comes down to. And for attorneys out there who are watching this, I'm sorry, but you do know <laughs> you've got a lot of power. And if you have the right client, if it's a really nice fit, and you understand their case and they convey it to you so you understand it right. it'll go much more seamless than like as a shot in the dark and uh anastasia you have yeah, your hand can up. I, you have your yeah, hand I just, up. i'm just so surprised <laughs> well go ahead yeah thank you susan it's actually yeah eye-opening i heard this uh before but i i yeah, I still didn't want to believe. So I, I do want to get in front of the judge and I do want to, <laughs> just how you just said. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, but, You're saying you uh, do want to get in front of the judge? I mean, I mean, that was my, that was my attitude. And I think I changed my mind. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Look what you did, Susan. Look yeah. what you did. It doesn't you made, her, up, but you it's, made it's, her disciple. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, you're not the first. You are not the first person who yeah who I heard it from. But it's it's just very hard to believe. And yeah, and and another question is like, I just yeah we when we start this we as like civilian people we don't even know what are we into what are we getting ourselves into when we go to the court right file whatever divorce let's say. So I just don't get still like. So judge decision is the last decision you can't appeal. You can't, let's say. No. Mm -mm. So it's, it's, it's done Etched forever. Stone. Etched <laughs> stone. I mean, I, I, I want to say it's not, but I, I don't want to say people, yeah. you know, yeah, the yeah. judge makes a decision. You don't like mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. You can go back. You can ever, it doesn't work like that because mm -hmm, you're mm -hmm. given a lot of opportunity. And okay, I've I seen see. in courtrooms where the judge says, you know, guys, listen, I don't want to make this decision for you. So what we're going to do, we're going to convene, go to your corners, sit with your attorneys, and we're going to meet again tomorrow. Oh, because the okay. judge doesn't want that yeah. lofty job. I mean, do you really want the judge who doesn't know you to make a decision about your kids for the yeah. rest of your life? I mean, yikes. And when that happens, so you know, when there's custody of, you know, and, and I've had clients come to me and they're like, well, the judge is gonna sign a parent coordinator and you'll see. And I go, well, do you really want a parenting coordinator or parents sometimes they're called parent coordinators. I've heard them called parenting coordinators, it's the same thing where this person sits down with you as a couple after the divorce, sometimes before, but typically after and they go, okay, here's the, here's the deal. And then they set up all kinds of ways for you to live with your kids you know yeah. you do check-ins okay. and i mean you basically have like this person I didn't know that. you 
telling you how to parent your kids. Wow. And they can be stuck with you for a very long time and you have to pay them. So I really say to people, Whoa. yeah, I'm sorry. You got to back that up a little bit. I have never heard of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to say this for the people who will watch this back later. So you're telling me we have, if I was in that position, I have mm-hmm. to pay them to tell me the arrangement that's going to work in parenting the children between me and my ex per se, or is, is court ordered? Is that what it is? Well, what happens is you're in a really high conflict divorce yeah. and the judge sees that you guys aren't going to behave or one of you is not going to behave. The mm-hmm. judge may appoint a court, excuse me, appointed parenting wow. coordinator. Now, who are these huh. people? Yes. They are typically social workers who have taken some coursework, depends on your jurisdiction. I know ours is about 12 hours of 12 hours. coursework in custody issues when it comes to divorce it may be comprehensive it may not be i mean they may be wow. drinking a big gulp while they I know. I don't know <laughs> he's sitting on the toilet dude <laughs> like I, the I have no <laughs> idea i've never seen the coursework wow. but these people are then assigned by a judge court mm-hmm. order which okay. means you would meet with the person once then your ex will meet with the person once then they'll meet with you together then they'll meet with each child individually, then they'll meet with the children in you. And yes, you pay them, you pay them hourly and they can range anywhere from $250 an hour to $400 an hour, depending on where you live in the States. And you kind of report to them. They will talk to you about parental alienation, all the things to do, not do, how to parent Mm -hmm. better. And they may have little programs for you that you have to do check-ins. And if one of you don't behave, this is where it gets kind of scary. They, if they notice one is alienating the kids or not behaving, they can appeal to the court, make a motion to the court to have your custody or whoever's not behaving. Whoa. Have that custody changed. And wow. the and the judges listen very carefully to these people. Now, where's the problem? Everybody I know who's had a parenting coordinator comes to me just in anguish because. A, these people can get biased. How many times do I hear, oh my gosh, they think my husband's so cute. He's a monster and they can't stand me. Well, there you go. You know, because you threw it in the hands of the court. Now I'm not laying blame. I'm just saying, try to work this out ahead of time. You don't want one of these people on your back. Now every coordinator, the planet who sees this is going to call me and give me a lot of grief. Uh, Uh, But, you know, I mean, it's just another piece. I mean, sometimes they're necessary when you have people who are just conflicted and they're not going to work it out. They're not going to do what the judge tells them. They are just not going to behave. But again, somebody else is now in your sandbox making decisions for you. Do you want that? Do you really want to report to somebody, he's not picking the kids up from soccer and I wasn't supposed to be there and now he called the police because I should, really, 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 are we going down this rabbit hole? (laughs) (laughs) You could have avoided all of this is what you're saying. A person could avoid all that drama. This is what I do. It's like, don't be your worst enemy. You have enough going on. Don't create anything. And I do talk about this. I'm like, do you, because I have clients all the time where they'll say, He's just being a jerk and I'm just not going to let him take the kids. And I'm like, whoa, bad idea, bad idea. Stop right now. They're like, but you don't understand. I'm like, here's what I do understand. You can lose custody if we start this, if you go down this place and I'm going to smack you if you do, you know, I mean, actually I don't smack anybody, but you know what I mean? Yes, you do. Yes, (laughs) you do. Come on, tell the (laughs) truth. No, never, never, never. But it's, it's something that very often people start going down a path because they're emotional. And that's the big part about this. You see, divorce is about dissolving a contract. It's about dissolving a a legal contract. Mm -hmm. But the action of divorce is about emotions. Let's talk about who the, let's talk about where the judges are educated. Mm -hmm. They go to college, usually they major in political science, government, history, right? They're not psych majors. They're psych majors. They go on to get degrees in psychology, right? So they take history, government, and then they go to law school where they learn contracts. Now they have to sit in a courtroom and listen to she said, he did, she did. Oh my gosh, they can't stand it. (laughs) And they hear it day in and day out. So they rely very heavily on those trained professionals, such as custody evaluators. Okay. 
best interest attorneys. Those are attorneys for those of you who don't know who they are. Those are attorneys for children. Best interest attorneys are also oh, best okay. guardian ad litems. Okay, attorneys for children. And then parent coordinators. They rely very heavily on the uh, recommendations of these professionals because these professionals are trained on the psychological side of divorce. Okay. Or you hope that they are. And there's a lot of controversy about the efficacy and the uh, education of and the abilities of these particular pro professionals. And like anything else, there's some great ones, there's not, some not so great ones, but right. you're just adding more to the stew of losing your control of your life. And in custody of your children, your life, end up losing all of it if the right moves are not made. So the judges, Rahat, 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 Blah, blah, blah. It's a long day here on the East Coast. It's five o'clock. Almost five o'clock. <laughs> the judges rely very heavily on these professionals to give them the recommendation that they see. Remember, the judge has a little snapshot when you come into the courtroom. You're not the only case they're hearing. The custody evaluator has may it may have worked twenty hours with your family, or the parent coordinator may have. Mm -hmm given 30 hours with your family, they will have more experience with your family. Doesn't mean they're not biased towards one parent. Doesn't mean they're doesn't right. Mean they're, doesn't mean they're doesn't right. Mean they're good at what they do. Right. But the judges will re rely very heavily on their recommendations. Mm -hmm. That's the president of the United States calling you or somebody or you just, what? <laughs> I hear dinging. So I was just wondering. So, I know this but, is, yeah. it's the end of the day, the end Go of the ahead. week. Panic sets in with everybody. I'm so sorry. So, so <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I want to ask this question sure. before we have to let you go have your life because you, you have different strategies that work only if the client is willing to cooperate with your strategy. If they think they know more than you, that's a problem, right? It's not a problem. I, I, well, I think I did not know it's not. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> No, it's not a problem. Just, no, I'm not there. Not, They're not, not my client. They're not my client anymore. No, no. <laughs> oh, oh, well, right. First of all, you know me, Paxton. I'm really uh, no BS. Yes, I do. I know. I'm no been, And by the way, you've been really good today. You, you've been, you, you're normally, you know, you, you really lay into it. You've been really laid back today. It must have been, we do it on a Friday. You're, you're going into it. No, no, I don't want to scare people. I mean, look. No. I can oh, really wait a minute. Me. There's well, nobody you can scare. No, don't even try to say that. Well, here's hey, how Anastasia, I'm gonna tell you, Anastasia, she's being nice, okay? Because I, well, I've here, seen her. Here's gonna rip because you, you asked. So here, here's where the rip comes. Go ahead. Here's go ahead. where the rip comes. Anastasia has a comment to uh, a question, but go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Say what you're gonna say. People don't have to do what I tell them because <laughs> I'm not telling anybody to do anything. What Got I it. am saying is, here's how divorce rolls. I've been in the courtroom over a thousand hours where I've been in the hot seat. Remember something, I was a PI. So I came to the courtroom, one side hated my guts because I had the evidence. Mm -hmm. Another yeah. side loved me because I had the evidence, all right? <laughs> and when you get in the courtroom and you're in the hot seat, it's the same thing. Litigators, attorneys, they just go back and forth. It's no sweat off of them. Yes, they want to win your case, right. of course. But you are going to be in that seat. So I want to prepare my clients. I want my clients to A, stop worrying about what their other spouse, what their spouse is doing. Because all Got I it. hear the whole time through the, is, well, you don't understand, Susan. He's doing this, he's doing that. And I'm like, he's going to do this. He's going to do that. Do you want me to stop him? I can't, you <laughs> that, can't. That's why that. you're divorcing him because he's doing that kind right. of stuff. You don't want to be married to him anymore because he's doing this and that. So let's not talk about this and that. But people are very fo hyper-focused. I'm, I'm using the word hyper-focused on mm -hmm. what the other person is doing. And that clouds their entire understanding of where they're headed okay if and you know you know i'm very much no fluff if somebody really yep. needs unicorns and rainbows and to talk about the best pay, you're not the person for i'm this. not the person now i'm not hardcore i want my clients to at the end of their divorce to go oh my gosh i had a reasonable divorce i'm good i'm moving on baby you know, that's yeah. what I want to hear them say. And for me to say to somebody now who's starting this journey or they've got their feet, you know, their ankle deep in the mud of it to mm. say, well, let's talk about your best path. All they know is their path is full of thorns and mud and quicksand. So they don't even know what that is. Mm. My objective 
is for them to understand the kind of divorce that they have, to start taking care of themselves, get their ex out of their headspace, which can be done, and then understand the kind of divorce that they have facing them, get, get realized what is really happening, and then start talking about the money and the children, get the heck off of social media. I mean, it doesn't mean you don't have to be off of social media, but if you're gonna post something really awful on your Instagram and it goes viral, that you call the judge a jerk, you're in big trouble. Okay. Yeah. Don't do that. And <laughs> I've seen do that, that before. <laughs> bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. Real bad idea. Unless you plan to move to another state with a different jurisdiction, you've changed your name and everything. <laughs> and you have yeah. a new social a security. Fake, a fake picture of social. In other words, you're basically in the witness protection program. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> other than that. Until and, the divorce and, is over, you're in the witness protection. Anastasia, that's what we're going to do with you. <laughs> so, is that so? Is is that is that how you like it, at Paxton? I mean, I'm you know I'm calling. No, that's, it, that's what I want people to understand that after yeah. ten days, or even if they do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, I find out, and I have a lot of clients that do VIP coaching with me. We spend a few weeks together. Um, we, there's accountability with that. They meet mm -hmm. with me the first week. We talk about what's bothering them in their heads. We talk right. about, I give them all kinds of steps to move into a next place so that the next week they're ready for the next step. And I do that over 10 weeks. And I have VIP clients who come to me broken down, don't know where they're headed. And before 10 weeks, after about four weeks, they're like, Susan, I'm feeling lighter. And I there said, you because go. you're not getting weighed down in all the details. You don't need... You know, when clients come to me, they're like, I found this on Google, Susan. Okay. So according to divorce law, article 12, 14, 15, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like okay. I'm like, you know, and they're like, and I know <laughs> that, that, and here's, and here's what, um, and article 12 and, and Dr. Phil said, <laughs> and I read this in Cosmo or something. Uh oh, see now, now, now you gotta see, you got somebody that needs your attention now. Um, <laughs> This is real time. Yeah, so, no, right I know, so it's just, no, I'm actually making a note about something we just said, because I wanted to really focus on that. And so, you know, it's, um, you know, that's, that's the program. Whether somebody does one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or they come into this course or even my online courses, I'm just really to the point because I don't want somebody a year from now, two years, three years from now say, no, I was just so emotional. I couldn't get to that place. Or he had an attorney that just blew mine out of the water. So I want to add a little something to this and this will maybe help Anastasia. And I always say to people, find out the kind of attorney your ex has. Find out. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I love his attorney. <laughs> because you want, you want to be equally lawyered up. Oh. You want to be equally lawyered up. I got to write that down. <laughs> That's pretty good. So it's no different than, and I use the analogy and I use it often. If there's a 220 pound guy in a boxing ring, would you put mm -hmm. a 125 pound guy in the ring to fight against him? Of course not. Oh, wait. Hold on. So why wouldn't you have be equally lawyered up? Now that has a negative connotation, but I don't mean it to come across that way. If your spouse is very collaborative and has a collaborative attorney, you are more than welcome to have a collaborative attorney and a collaborative divorce. Mm -hmm. But if you, and I've had clients say, oh my God, their, their attorney is, is a shark. And I'm like, well, you need to have equal representation. Yeah. You got a tuna. You, yeah. Right. You got to, right. yeah, right. you got to. And I don't like the term shark, guppy. Attorney, but you'll hear it all no, the time. No, no. So, so if they're not equally lawyer, lawyered up, and this couple walks into the courtroom, mm -hmm. the judge can tell the difference, yes? Depends on his mood that day, depends on her, his yeah, or her but, mood. But what does that mean? I mean, the judge is there to make a ruling because the judge has a stock of folders on- Got um, it, okay. So it's and, and usually how it's for people who don't know how the courtroom works, there's a morning docket, there's an afternoon docket. So the judge will hear cases in the morning, which are usually like around nine o'clock to lunchtime. Mm -hmm. And then okay. they beat and they're off. Okay. And then they mm -hmm. beat and they're off. Or, or um, they have an afternoon docket. I have only one time in my career, one time as a PI, where a judge came back 
for a case in the afternoon. Most of the time, they just want to wrap it up. So whatever they have on their, their desk, yeah. they're, they've just got it on their, their desk. And, you know. They're done. Then, then they do they're that and they're done. done. They're okay, so, done. Done. So, Stick a fork in it. It's done, darling. So, they so before, are done. <laughs> before we get to Anastasia, hold that thought there, Anastasia. Just real quick. Morning or afternoon, if you had to say, just off the top of your head, what do you what do you say? It doesn't really matter, or you should try to get somebody in the morning, you should try to get somebody in the afternoon. What do you say? Me? Doesn't matter. Are you asking yeah. Susan? Yeah, no, it I'm asking. Matter. You. It doesn't matter. There's judges who who are good in the morning, they come in the morning. There's others that come in the afternoon. Sometimes judges, for those who don't know this, sometimes judges are like semi-retired. And they come in two days a week and they may be coming oh, okay. in the afternoon. So they come in the morning. They're like, I got to get on the golf course. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's, that's good to yeah, know. And I know <laughs> a lot of judges and they're amazing people, but let's face it. Look what they do every day. They come in, somebody's lying in front of them. You know, <laughs> sometimes yeah. they, somebody's they, lying. Yeah. Nobody's lying. Mm-hmm. But yeah. they may hear a multitude of cases. Okay, so you may come into a courtroom, depending, are you in district court, circuit court, Supreme Court, Superior Court? It depends on where you are in your state, how that uh, how it works out. Mm-hmm. But you may have to sit through three or four. Judge, I didn't run a red light. Judge is like, really? Because we have, you know, you know, how many how many violations do you have? I've never had any. And the judge looks on the computer. You have seventeen DUIs. <laughs> what are you crazy? Yeah. You know. So the judges have to go through this. There's a lot of paper shuffling. They hand some, up something to the bailiff. The bailiff hands to the court stenographer, and this goes on and back and forth and back and forth. So there's a lot of that motion. It's not like. CSI or SVU where the music plays and everybody looks a certain way. <laughs> it's not like that at all, you know, and it's, and it, and it gets very tedious and then you come up with a divorce and you can just you see the judges. Are like, After wow. all of that, then you come up with, a, a, a let's say me, I walk up with a divorce and I'm going, there are narcissists and there, and he, the judge is going like, I have no time for hearing that. Well, they're, not in the, they're not in the mood for, for that. They just want the facts. Is that what, how it goes? Well, because what happens is somebody, you know, the lawyer starts saying things. And then, of course, you always have somebody. He's lying, Your Honor. No, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Don't, um, don't say that. Don't, we talk about don't, don't say, say that. that. Yeah. But it's it's very emotional. Sometimes people haven't seen their spouse in a while. Okay. okay. Now they're in mm-hmm. divorce court. The reality is that they're dissolving a marriage after 5, 10, 15, sometimes 30, 35 years. Mm-hmm. Or um, they see that their spouse may lie or say terrible things about them. It, it's very emotional and the judges know that and are very sensitive to that. But at the same token, they've got a stack. They've got a stack of cases that they have to get through by that yeah. morning. And you really want to have your settlement ready so that when you get in front of the judge, you know how to behave, you know, and I have something called ACE court attitude, conduct mm-hmm. and etiquette. Ooh, like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just simple things like for anybody who's listening, you have ink on your neck, tattoos, get medical makeup and get it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's one good point, a giveaway. And I've had clients say to me, well, I think it looks cool. Well, I was in court once and a woman was fighting for custody and she had Chinese characters on her neck. And the judge says, do you speak Mandarin? No, <laughs> you speak mm-hmm. Cantonese. She said, no, what's on your neck? Well, it says love, peace. And they go, well, if you don't speak Mandarin and you don't speak, <laughs> how do you know what's on your neck? <laughs> that was his. Like, well, he said, so that could be anything, really. What kind? And you're a responsible parent. I mean, that was the connect. That judge made that. that yeah, lead. for him. Now, for him. Yeah, right. There's judges who don't care. You could come in with ink all over your face and ink sleeves and they don't care. But what if they do? So I prepare clients for the most conservative judges possible right. because if you walk in there i mean they don't you don't walk in there with a little short shirt and flip-flops just don't do it <laughs> don't do it. it's not gonna work anastasia you've been so sweet to not only be here but to be kind enough but but i just love listening to susan please forgive me susan i just uh know you needed a break there but no, anastasia my my, oh, very my friend, go ahead go no, ahead i have I have a rhetorical question <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. At, the end, at the end of this uh, conversation. I still have a question. How to divorce a narcissist? <laughs> How? 
um, like what, 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 a, what an advice yeah for the for the startup for the starters not someone for who is starters. already yeah but for the for someone who is like okay i decided yes i want to divorce him i'm done <laughs> yes so done. What, what are the steps because because it seems like you cannot uh bring all that uh um baggage to the judge because you need to come with a settlement but you cannot get settlement from someone with a narcissistic disorder it's impossible unless the settlement is to give everything away and just walk out with your shoes and whatever on and with a long long uh lifelong um spousal child support and other debts right. <laughs> on yeah. you on you <laughs> Then and that's, they, when that's they would a good be question. That's a good question. And I, I work one on one with people on how to divorce a narcissist. I wish I could give you a really simple uh, 10 word answer. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you're divorcing one, that's an impossible thing for me to do. And I would be doing you a big disservice if I gave you a one stop shop answer. What I can tell you, it's not an easy journey. You have to take a deep breath and realize that you're in for a long haul because a narcissist is not going to make a divorce easy for you. Yeah. And I've Thank seen you. divorces Thank that you. just put your hair on fire to what these people do. So you have to take care of yourself. You have to recognize that you cannot change them. And, and these are three points I want to be, you have to take care of yourself. You cannot change them and be prepared for anything. So when I say mm -hmm. take care of yourself, I really mean it. And I give a lot of points and tips on how people can take care of themselves. Number two, and that is you can't change them. And I hear this consistently. Clients will call me or people will reach out and say, if they would only stop doing this, or can you make them stop? Or will my attorney make them stop? A narcissist needs adulation and adjuration, and they will do whatever it takes. And they don't care who they hurt along the way. And that's just tough. Do not try to change them. And number three, just prepare. Somebody was divorcing a narcissist once and the person had done horrible things to her, this woman and her kids. And I said, you know, you and I could spend eight hours tomorrow and make a list of a hundred awful things this guy could do to you. And you know mm -hmm. what? Next day he'll do 101. They're always going to surprise you. So what you have to do mm -hmm. is take care of yourself. Recognize you cannot change them. Mm -hmm. When you get divorced, mm -hmm. make sure the language in your decree is dense. When I say dense, I mean very tightly written. So when they violate, they're in trouble. So let's say you have a car and they're supposed to turn the car over to you. You have a Toyota, a Honda, mm -hmm. a Honda Accord, and they're supposed mm -hmm. to turn over the 2019 Honda Accord to you. That language is not okay. It has to be on the following date. Wow. Mm -hmm. At 9 a.m., husband and wife are to meet at attorney's office to mm -hmm. exchange the title or give the wife the title to the 2019 mm -hmm. Honda Accord VIN number. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. We all yeah. laugh. I'm serious. Wow. Serious. Mm -hmm. VIN number, year of the car, how many doors are on the car, describe it to its teeth, the <laughs> interior of the color. Yes. yes. Anastasia's laughing. Wow. She knows. It's true. I'm 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 laughing because I have a house to to, to split with everything inside. Wow. So it's, yeah. and it has it's to be gonna that. be a long story. He, wow. Because with a normal person, you could say that night 2019 Honda Accord. You can just kind of kind of leave it. Like up and they'll turn it over, and, it, and you'll be done. Not right? a narcissist. You better bring it down to the brass tacks, the bare roots, and and mean it. And I suggest when there's cars or exchange of property, you have an executor. You have somebody who's there mm -hmm. because okay. if they're not a no, if they're a no show and your attorney is assigned an executor and they don't show up, wow, wow. you know, then they're in contempt of court and, it, mm. and you won't have to do anything, Anastasia or anybody who's divorcing a narcissist, because if you say to them, so let's just back, backpedal a little bit. So let's say you do the regular divorce, the 2019 mm -hmm. Honda Accord. Okay. Most people would go, okay, I'll give her the Honda Accord. The court said, we agreed on that and she gets it. I'll drop it off at her house. She can come pick it up, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not with yes normal people narcissists not going to happen not going to happen so if you don't have the dense language they're not going to show up at all with the 2019 hondo cord and in fact they'll send you a, a text that's like i'll give you the accord but 
you are a bitch and I'm not giving you the car unless you mm -hmm. give me da da da. And yeah, Susan. Yeah. The car. Or I'll yeah, show Susan, you. They, they, would say, like they would say, I gave you the car. You already yeah, have whatever. it. You, you don't remember. You have it. That's <laughs> right. I gave you the car. You're oh. exactly right. Or better yet, yeah. I'll bring you the car in a day that ends in Y. That's always a creative. <laughs> one. Okay. I've seen that enough. I've experienced <laughs> that one. <laughs> and then. You call oh, your attorney, good. you're panicked. You're like, he was supposed to give me, or she, but we're going to say he in this example because we're talking about Anastasia. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to give me the car. He didn't give me the car. I can't believe it. And the attorney's like, well, are you sure you were there? Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Don't even go down that rabbit hole. And that's why you need the attorney who understands. So you say something like on September 4th at 4 p.m., both parties are to be at the law offices of I can't stand you another minute. <laughs> Be there. <laughs> Bell's resident. That, that Susan, <laughs> Susan, that should be a course that you do. <laughs> I can't send you another minute. That should be a book that you write on your on your on your being a PI and other stuff. I or a t-shirt line. That's your new merch line. I can't stand like you another minute. <laughs> For, wait, wait, $29.99 for t-shirts. Somebody they would buy that. Somebody would buy that for $29. Actually, I'd, they would. Let's I'd do get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go I'll, ahead. I'll, I'll check with the attorneys. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sure send it to your client. There you go. But so they so you show up at the and then there's an executive there, or there's somebody who's enacting the transaction, and you talk about the the definitively what that piece of property is. And then if they don't show up, they're doing it in the face of the lawyers, they're doing it in the face of the executive, the face of the courts. And then you have a contempt. Anything short of that, I can almost promise you they will violate it. And the same thing mm -hmm. comes with child with uh, child custody and exchanges mm -hmm. with other parents. Like hey, every other Friday, you can pick them up. Really, with a narcissist, not a not a not a. No, huh? it's not going to wow. happen. And and so you want that language very dense. Also, with credit card payments, any financial, any assets. If you're divorcing a narcissist and I wasn't going to even bring it up, but the Anastasia did. The language has to be written very densely and very specifically with okay. no wiggle room because they will find that wiggle room and jerk if, you around with it. If the lawyer and, is and, not and, capable of doing that, that's a problem though. He doesn't know that he has to write it dense. He'll go like, no, you just write this and he'll cooperate. You got to push back maybe a little bit. Well, it, there's attorneys who are like, come on, he's not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, well, yeah. yes, he is. I want the language written this way. And if they've been with you on this journey, I mean, sometimes the narcissist will behave beautifully. Yeah. We know how that is in front of the judges, in front of everybody. They're just charming. And I call them the five mm -hmm. C's. Okay. But um, the five C's. You need a posting. Charming, that. convincing, <laughs> <laughs> calm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, collective. And then I throw conniving in there. Conniving. So there's a few. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and they fool everybody, right? You walk out of the courtroom mm -hmm. and they text mm -hmm. you horrible things. Uh, you, you wish you were dead, those kind of things. So it's really important that you are clear with your attorney that this is what's happening. This is what's happening behind the scenes. Very often, the narcissist through this process will mess up. The card will come down a little bit. Everybody mm -hmm. sees it. And then you could say to your attorney, uh-huh, see what happened? This is why we have to really cover every track. So Anastasia, I hope I answered that question. I didn't, I know we got a couple of chuckles out of it, but it's not funny. Mm -hmm. It's really scary. And you can always reach out to me and we can talk further about it. Thank you. you see, Thank you because it can get, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you can really lose your shirt with these people. You, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. You, you have been amazing. Uh, to spend this time with us. Uh, Anastasia, thank you also for being here. But Susan, uh, your course, uh, because this is going to get posted on our website, will show slices, especially what I'm about to ask you right now on Instagram. Uh, mm -hmm. But your course is one that everyone should take if they want no fluff. And that course fluff. is called what again? What's the name Divorce of that course? Power. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, and I love the videos that you've done, too, on Instagram. I had to repost those stories. They were perfect. Okay, we need to let you go back to your normal life uh, because you're a superstar. Uh, I'm a help divorce coach. What's normal about that? <laughs> you help others to, to find their way. But I'm going to ask you one last thing. Sure. 
when you tell people to get out of their headspace, please emphasize that one more time before you have to go for people to get out of their headspace. You mean get their ex out of their headspace? Oh, excuse me, get their, sorry, get their ex out of their headspace. Well, why is that? Why is that important, and what does that mean? Well, getting your head. Ed, well, it's it's starting to think as a single person versus a double as far as, as a couple. And clients of mine, often who are women, most of them are women, although I do get some men, but primarily women. They're scared. What is he going to do next? What's going to happen next? Oh my God! What? What? what I'm scared. He's going to do. He's going to take the kids. He's going to do this. He's been awful to me. And all of their decisions are shrouded around what he could possibly do instead of what's necessary for her to do. Mm -hmm. So they're so hyper-focused on him mm -hmm. and possibly his girlfriend and the fact that he may have cheated, that he used to beat her, that he's got the money, he's driving a flashy car, her car's breaking down, whatever it is, the hyper-vigilance on this mm -hmm. other person. And it really makes an entire different journey in divorce mm -hmm. if you don't have your ex that's in your headspace. And there are a lot of divorce coaches that are like, we understand, you know, and it takes years. Okay, it does, but let's talk about your divorce. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the ways because what happens is sometimes people get a little obsessed. They're, they're checking the person's social media or they do spot checks. I had a woman once, she's like, why do spot checks to see if he's dating anyone? I'm like, how far away does he live? She's like, 90 minutes. I'm like, that's not a spot check. That's stalking. You know, like, why are you? That's not a spot check. Spot check is he's, his house is right on the way to your home, and I don't want you to do that either. But when you're taking that kind of time and energy, and I've heard tragic stories of people that really get obsessed, and that doesn't enable them to move forward. So that's something I cover very early in the game, because if you're plagued by your ex, that's always in your head, mm -hmm. it's really hard to move forward to have a divorce that's going to work for you. And your well, best thank you for explaining that. You've got a lot of love from Anastasia here with hearts and uh, prayers for, for you and all the kindness. Uh, thank you, Anastasia, for your kind words. Um, I know right now is the perfect time for all of us uh, to stop this conversation for one reason is because it's um it's Susan's dinner time. Isn't it dinner time for you? It's like not yet, but it's coming. It's okay, around. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> exactly. you need to go have a normal life. Thank you for being a beautiful person that you are. You are so awesome and no fluff. I think you need a shirt that says that too. Uh, thank you for being no fluff. Right. That's the whole thing. I need to go into a different business. No fluff. <laughs> I mean, you come <laughs> up with all of these. I can't stand you to, yeah, you know what? <laughs> you should start a business where you come up with hashtag for other people. Because that's actually oh, a good one, no fluff. That's really good, a woman. You need to have a no fluff uh, program. Uh, anyhow, thank you, my friend. I'll stop right now and say goodbye to everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Bye.